Hello, my name is Kevin and this is the Love Decanters channel. Today I'm going to talk about Georgian jelly glasses. So I will show you one which is like the most basic form. Here it is. Bowls are always a trumpet shape with a inverted lip. Um, either no stem or a very short rudimentary stem. Uh, normal foot. And um, yeah, this one's got lots of wear probably 18th century. Um, the book I'm mainly going to be relying on is um, the trusty L.M. Bickerton. So if I'm showing you, because I'm, I'm not going to show you the cover over and over again, um, yeah, this is a, if you're going to collect 18th century glasses, this is the book, okay? Um, so L.M. Bickerton, uh, 18th century drinking glasses. And um, yeah, you, you need, it's not cheap anymore because it's out of print, but yeah, it's, it's the Bible reference for this kind of stuff. Um, so uh, what, what are jelly glasses for? Uh, as the name implies, it's for eating um, jelly out of with a spoon. Uh, back in the 18th century, the way they made jelly, it didn't come in little squares like you buy from the shop. Uh, yeah, it was expensive because, um, yeah, this is horrible now. So they would get calves' hooves, yeah, the calf didn't survive that, and um, boil them for hours and hours and hours and render them down till they were just um, like a soup. And when it cooled, it became a jelly, and um, they would have, add sugar and flavours to that, and that's how they would make jelly in the old days. So, yeah, pretty horrible, but that's um, how it was done. And... Um, so yeah, it was a delicacy, um, and they would serve it. I think I've got a book here. Yes, yes, yes. Here it is. Um, I'm only going to use this book to show you this. This is the um, Arthur Negus, um Guide to British Glass, uh, and it's got a lovely illustration in it. There you go. So this is called a Tazza, and they would serve it on a glass like cake dish. Uh, and if you were very posh, you would have one and then you would have a smaller one on top of that one. So you'd have it like a pyramid and maybe a smaller one on top of that one. So you'd have like three or four of them all piled up with um, smaller and smaller tazzas. And um, yeah, so that's how you'd serve it to, you know, at your posh do. So your guests would go along and take themselves a glass and spoon it out to themselves. So yeah. That's, um, that's what it's all about. So I have quite a lot of them, that's the bad news. Um, so I'll be showing you and I'll be um, showing you relevant things in um, Ellen Bickerton as I, as I go along. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this. So I'm gonna start at the, the bottom of my collection in that these are the most simple ones. Um, yeah, there's a slight variation between these. Um, it's so slight, but if you look at this one there is no stem whatsoever all you're seeing is that basically the thickness at the base of the glass where it's attached to the foot um, broken pontal lots of wear and next to that you have a very small stem yeah. broken pontal yeah, the wear doesn't look so bad on this one but because it's actually sitting on the edge of the glass, but there is wear around the edge of that glass. Then this one, it has a, a knob and it's kind of semi submersive. Yeah, broken pondle again. Oh, and I think as you can see there's a bit of soot in the, in the glass there, if it'll focus. Oh, this one's got a chip. Oh no, that's a bubble. That's that's. So this is a manufacturing fault. There was actually a bubble on the that was on the surface. So it's not a chip. It's just like a rounded piece that's missing. Um, so that's a manufacturing fault. And then I'm banging them together. Hopefully don't destroy. And then another one with a knob, but it's kind of got like a raised up knob, and it's it's a bit more defined than the other one. And this one is slimmer. But you get the idea. This is. The basic form of them um, and uh, I will show you the reference in um, Ellen Bickerton which says late 18th, 18th century. 
But here we are with the first ones I showed you in Bickerton. There you go. This one's got a small knob. Um, so that's those ones. So um, these three here, they won't be in Bickerton because in actual fact, uh, Bickerton's for 18th century glasses and these are early 19th century glasses as denoted by this panel cutting. Um, yeah, they, these are post 1800 um, going through to Regency period. Um, but the form is still the same. You can see this one's got no stem at all. Um, this one is, you can see in actual fact, its shape is a bit different. It's got a more bell-shaped, um, the, the panel cuttings are a bit wider and shorter. But yeah, oh, it also has a polished pontal mark. Um, these all have polished pontal marks. Apart from, well, this one, they had a go at polishing, but in actual fact, the pontal is still a bit there, um, but it's it's more of a failure. Um, this one also has like a massive piece of frit there. Can you see that? That's probably a bit of clay off the side of the pot that they were making the glass in. This one also has, it's a bit, a bit of a fancy one in that you can see there's um, cutting around the edge of the foot as well, and the rim. So yeah, so this one is later. Um, so these are all post 1800. So I only have one like this, um, and it's in this form with a short stem, but it's got a bladed knob. And yeah, this isn't in Bickerton because this is also post 1800, but the bowl shape, you can see that is the critical piece. The stem is short long bowl and trumpet rim here's another rather nice one with a monteith or scalloped rim like this yeah i think i've showed you one something like this in the um in the sweet meat glasses with the round and the point the round and a point um, this flat cutting, which tends to be for um, treadle powered cutting, and then it's got actually hexagonal cut stem, and you can see the wear. It does also have a, a flat polished pontal. Yep, so this isn't in Bickerton, however, um, the Monteith glasses I'll show you one has this same cutting, and he's saying. Um, 1800 so I will go with that so this is the Monteith glass here that is um, cut like mine and yeah you've got 1800 on that so uh, this one is a bit of an odd one out in my collection it's got somewhere the um, lemon squeeze pressed in base here. Um, yeah, it's not usual. It's this really fine ribbing is not usual. Um, it does feel like it's got a bit of age. I'm wondering if this is hexagonal cut base. I'm wondering if this is some sort of continental copy. If it is English and it's period, I will date it to about 1800 because that's about when Bickerton dates these lemon squeeze bases to. But yeah, I'm in a little bit of a quandary about that one. And um, yeah, if anybody can ID that properly, I would really like to know. So these are my um, best um, jelly glasses. Um, they're all mid to, um, early to mid 18th century ones um, because Bickerton is a, is a git all of the ones in his book are better than mine um, yeah so he has one that's kind of like this but his isn't like this it's got a pan top 
which is very rare. Um, he's got a molded one like this with this molding. But yeah, his has got a better, you know, it's got one of these domed feet and yeah, pan top. And he's got one of these hexagonal ones um, with a dome foot. And his is Ryzen. So what a get. Yeah. So it's kind of like the more features they have, the better they are. So like my hexagonal one, yeah, which is very desirable um, if you're into jelly glasses with a domed foot. Yeah, that's very desirable. But if it's right, then it's even more. You know how it goes. The more features, the better. Um, you can see it's got a broken pontal there. It's got a squashed knob. Um, yeah, it's the, that's quite a nice honeycomb one. Um, and yeah, this one with a domed foot. Um, yeah, look, and panel ribbing, but yeah, the, the domed foot says I'm an early one. And um, yeah, um, my probably my only consolation is that I'm, I'm a cheap git and I've hardly paid anything for any of mine. So. Um, yeah, you know that's how it goes. So I will show you what's in in Bickerton, that's like these but better. So here's the hexagonal one in Bickerton. You can see uh, his has got a domed foot as well, but you can see it's writhen. So it's mine is just plain. Um, as I said, he's a good. He's got a better one. Um, so that's that. So here we are, another page of Bickerton, and um, you've got here the panel moulded one with the domed foot, um, and it's got this kind of crunchy foot like mine has. Um, but yeah, his is a pan top, yeah, git, and um, and here's a honeycomb one, and um, yeah, his doesn't have a knot, mine does. It's got a domed foot, but yeah, his is a pan top, so yeah, he's still a git. So um, those are the jelly glasses I have, and um, yeah, jelly glasses are um, a good thing to collect because um, they can be bought as bargains. They're, they're never massively expensive, and it really depends on you know the little plain ones. They can be had for you know ten, fifteen pounds, something like that, maybe a bit more depending on how knowledgeable the person selling them is. But um, yeah, but the thing about them is, is that they look like little vases and uh, and they're frequently sold as little vases. Let me show you something. Yeah, I have a pair of these. Um, and I bought these, yeah, and I showed you one of them earlier, but um, I bought these as bud vases from an antique centre for seven pounds. Yeah, from an antique centre. So the dealer didn't know that he got a pair of 18th century, desirable 18th century, or sort of circa 1800 um, jelly glasses. You know, you should know your business if, if you're in this business. And um, yeah, so they're nice to collect from that point of view in that if you don't have a lot of money, um, you know, I've just picked up bargains as I've gone along, gone, oh yeah. And actually, in fact, I have actually got rid of some over the years because I've had so many at one point. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it is a good thing to collect because there's, there's lots of small variation in them or quite a bit really, if you look at them over the time period, but the simple ones, even the simple ones, there's variation. Um, and um, yeah, and the other thing I'd like to mention is, yeah, Ellen Bickerton, you saw those pages. The whole book is like that, really. It's just like page after page of pictures. I know it's all black and white, but hey, it's glass. Um, with just a little label next to them. It's this, it's this, it's this, it's this. It's a great book. What, what more do you need? You just want to know what is it that I've got? How old is it? Obviously, they're old English glasses. Hardly anybody knows who any made any of them. Um, so, yes, in some cases you may know, but generally you don't. Um, so, yeah, if you, um, I will be doing other 
uh, features on other glasses. I've got like a whole pile of dual fails. I'll do a show on that. I'll do custom glasses as well because I've got quite a few of those and um, some other glasses and pieces that I'm, I'm going to do. So yeah, if you would like to see those videos, please remember to like and subscribe um, and I'll be getting on and doing those at some point, working my way through my glass collection. So thank you very much for watching.